Welcome, everyone, to the Everything Show. I am your host, Matrix Lord Two One Two, and I'm with James. What's up, James? Hi, everybody. What's up, Vaughn? Hey, what's up? All right, so there's a few things that stand out that I wanted to touch upon. We know that Black Panther's been on DVD, Blu-ray, um, 4K, all that stuff. What you don't probably know is that it didn't leave the theaters. Um, and it, for weeks, is still making money. Uh, not a lot, but maybe 15000 a day. On the weekend, maybe on a Friday, it makes 45000 On a Saturday, it makes 65000 On a Sunday, it makes like almost 40000 So we are very close domestically. I mean, close but not close. It has 699656474 So it needs less than 300 About, well... Less than three hundred and I guess fifty thousand to reach that seven hundred million dollar domestic number. Also keep in mind it has a billion, one billion three hundred and forty six million one hundred and eighty thousand four nine dollars worldwide. So it really doesn't need to do any more, but it would be nice to get that seven hundred million domestic number. It's a bloody good record, too. <laughs> I know, and, and, it, and it could be possible. I mean, I thought it would have been done two weeks ago, right, Vaughn? Yeah. But well, it's let's not. let's compare it to um, Solo. Now, Solo's not doing that great, right? Because... Well, Solo, they spent, like, so much money on it that even though it looks like it's doing okay, it's not doing okay. Well, they released it at a terrible time. That's a terrible uh, time. It should have been December, people. right. I mean, against Avengers, really? I mean, it yeah. is, it's a few weeks after, but it's still against Avengers. And also, yes. it's Disney. why are they releasing against their own products? I don't understand what Disney's doing. I know, we've uh, been talking about that numerous times. It doesn't make but, any sense. It doesn't, and also, Solo had terrible marketing as well. But Black Panther, it didn't have that much marketing, but it's done so well. I don't know why. It's kind of a, maybe it's because it's just such a good movie. Well, we're getting some infighting coming out. We're getting Lucasfilm kind of leaking to the <laughs> press that they had told Disney that they wanted it delayed till December and that Disney said absolutely not. Okay? So they're trying to say and claim that if Disney would have listened to them, the movie would have been out in December. All right? But they didn't. And... <laughs> Yeah. yeah, there's two reasons why it's done. Obviously the timing, but also because last year, let's be honest, Last Jedi is probably the most controversial movie since episode one. Yeah. And also there was the Star Wars, I know it's a video game, but Star Wars Battlefront 2 was also very controversial. So people yes. were really annoyed with Star Wars. As a too friend. soon, too <laughs> soon from Last Jedi. Six months. Yeah. Only. Lots so, of fans were annoyed, so you should have yeah. waited. But you know what? They can, Lucasfilm can't totally blame Disney because they had their track record of they're they're looking not they're looking for directors that are like not like like I guess creative different type of director not looking for the top top director and they've been running into problems with people on Rogue One and all the directors and they wound up people parting ways and then they have to step in. And going forward, Disney is no longer uh, – not Disney. Um, Lucasfilm is not going to do that anymore. They're going to make sure that the person has a long track record director-wise uh, and a new, a nice um, portfolio, and they're only going to put the best directors on. But they are taking them big risks with Ryan Johnson too. I mean, yeah. They gave him a trilogy before he even released his movie. <laughs> I know. That's, that's um, uh, weird. That's, that's safe. Uh, maybe his idea was excellent. It must be a brilliant idea. Is that, that's the only way. Um, Look, it may have made a lot of money, but not a lot of people are happy with it. That's the difference. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and overall, and will hurt the franchise. That's the issue, isn't it? The fans don't turn Star Wars fandom is very big. Going back to Black Panther, do you know what Avengers did domestically? Just out of interest. Yes, Avengers we have. Uh, and again, it's... Let me just get the numbers here. Hold on. Okay, so Avengers Infinity War domestically has 666,473,647. But it's going to surpass 700 million soon, but still, the fact that Black Panther's even close, well, even slightly ahead of it still, is quite amazing. 
No but way. the difference is, though, while Black Panther has one billion, three hundred million, and so on, Infinity War has two billion, twenty-two <laughs> yeah. million. That's because um, that's the difference. War, that's that's global, yeah, because you know it's a big movie, so everyone in the world wants to see it. And people don't think that Avengers is going to touch Black Panther domestically. And I, for one, agree because of the placement it is. Right now, it's in seventh place. It's on its way out of the top ten. Black yeah. Panther's totally out of the top ten, but it's still, I mean, as, as time goes on, of course, you know, it, it's not even in the top 20, but it's still making enough. And then on the weekends is when it's making a good amount where it could reach 700 million domestically. Yeah. Um, I, so the box office is weird lately because we also had a wrinkle in time, which came out in March that bombed. But then Brie Larson, who is Captain Marvel, made this big thing on Twitter about it. And then everybody went to see it mm -hmm. and it jumped up 1,500%. <laughs> Which got millions, and it never left the theater since March. Yeah, that, do you know another thing? I will say the box office will be very funny over the next month too because of the UK. So obviously, for example, usually the UK get movies either at the same time as America, or slightly before, or slightly after. Right. Uh, that's not happening this month. Uh, Incredibles two, we're getting it a month late. Right. Because of the World Cup. That's going to affect a lot of movies. And a lot of movies not coming out in the UK for a month. So global figures will be a bit skewed for lots of movies for the next month or so. Right. Because the UK is a big market. I think it well, is anyway. Well, the funny thing is you guys had Jurassic World, uh, which is a Jura second Jurassic Park, I oh, guess. Oh, no, please don't. I mean, second, second Jurassic World. I'm sorry. Second yeah. Jurassic World. But it didn't even reach. I mean, it's going to be here tomorrow. But it almost made five hundred million dollars overseas. I, I don't know why. I mean, I've seen that movie, and I'm telling you, and without spoilers, that's a shame because it's, it's not good. Let's just fell asleep, asleep, right? Yeah, I fell asleep. <laughs> it's supposed like, to be a dinosaur movie, not a movie about. I don't even want to. I'm not going to spoil the plot, but yeah, it's it's not good. I mean, it's different than the other movies, and I guess. We didn't want the same movie, you know. What the problem is, people always complain, oh, wh why would they go back to the island? They keep going back to the island. Wh why are these just dumb people? Uh, but th there's a good reason, but the villain is terrible. And it's, <laughs> it's very boring. I think they knew that they kind of screwed up, but because they were promoting three when two wasn't even out yet. Yeah, yeah, I'm more excited. Colin Trevorrow, Colin Trevorrow. Colin, they kept saying it, like Colin Trevorrow. Mm -hmm. I'm just tired of these hybrid dinosaur storylines. How about just screw that? Let's well, that's just... going to end, I heard. Oh, that's really? It. Not in the next movie. It's just going to be regular dinosaurs. Yeah, I mean, okay, the first movie, cool. Hybrid dinosaur, it's a new idea. But you don't copy the same idea for the next movie. No, I heard it's pure. It, it's totally different. So, But still, so, how much different could it be, though? I mean, yeah, I mean, the only thing they haven't done so far is make the world infested by dinosaurs somehow. So if they somehow pull that off, cool. See, I don't think they would do that because, and I don't want to use Sharknado as an example, but Sharknado kind of destroyed the whole entire world where you can't really make another movie anymore. So they yeah. have to do a time travel movie to erase every single movie. To and do they also movie. tried that with War of the Planet. Oh my God, War of the Planet Apes is not a good movie, in my opinion. Uh, Terrible yeah. movie. I saw it too. I don't like yeah, it. Somebody agrees. Thank you. <laughs> it didn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. Like if you compare it to the old ones, it doesn't exist. It's just a fill-in movie that it's doesn't make any sense. The first two rebooted movies are good. The good movies. No. Um, but that movie had no plot. They ruined it. They ruined it. And they and they you know killed them off at the end, which is stupid. Yeah, uh, especially with the, the father-son thing. That, I just like, that's not even realistic. Come on, man. Come Rubbish. on. And especially a suck-ass villain like that, that you're going to die. Like, come on. It would have been better if he would have died against Cobra. Like died so. was terrible. Utterly beyond bad. I know. But I'm sure they're going to have the son, and they're going to have uh, uh, Andrew Sudeikis be the son in the next mm -hmm. one. You know, and he's going to look like Caesar, I guess, and whatever. <laughs> You know, um, I want to get into shift, uh, 
from the movies for a second. And we'll go mm-hmm. back to movies, but I just want to I I read the final and I'm sorry if you guys are not interested in the comics, some people the viewers out there. I want to just get it off my chest. I'm a big Spider Man fan. So this is the final um Dan Slot book. Uh Dan Slot's been on for years and years and years on Amazing. Um, just finished the big storyline with the Red Goblin, which was a cross between Norman Osborn and Carnage. Um, and the amount of covers and variants that they had is like they broke the record. Um, the last comic was like a $10 comic. It was 80 pages pure, not even those side stories. Pure 80 pages of story Dan Slott. It was fantastic. Was this the was pages in a comic book. Yeah, but it was actually, you know how they, if they would always have 80 pages or more, it would be different stories. This was the pure yeah, whole the book same, was the story. Wow. Um, but, of course, that wasn't – 800 wasn't the final one because Dan Slott wanted one more just to, to give, like, a homage to uh, – like, say goodbye to Spider-Man. So he just did, like, um, a story that wasn't really set in the present. It was set throughout – different. it could be any time. And it was just, like, a nice nod to, you know, Spider-Man in general and – what he who he is and what he does and how people respect him for saving their lives and stuff. So I gotta say it was a re- it was a really nice touching book. It was really good. I really enjoyed it. Um, and then well, also, Spider-Man's getting a lot of press this year as well. You know, yeah. there's a lot of stuff you know that the game as well, isn't there? You know, yeah. Um, and I'll go into detail in our new podcast, the Mega Comics Cast. Um, so I just wanted to share that. And also, Dan Slott now, leaving Amazing Spider-Man, took over Iron Man and Fantastic Four. So Iron Man came out today, Iron Man number one, and I'll be doing a review on there too. Um, and Fantastic Four is coming out, I believe, in August. I, I want to get the Iron Man comic so bad. Is it any good? I liked it a lot, yeah. Uh, and then he's doing the Fantastic Four. He's bringing them back, Dan Slott. So... I do, ha- I do, you know what, I, I will do a quick review on it. Um, I mean, I was talking, to, I, I sent a message to Dan Slott about Amazing. I didn't get to talk to him about Iron Man. Um, but I did really enjoy it. I think the cover is stunning, okay? It's really, I, I like whoever did the cover. It's, um, who did the cover? Valerio Chititi, I, I don't know the names, I'm sorry. But fantastic cover. Twist. And the basic thing here is that, look, he's a billionaire, trillionaire, whatever, right? So why don't they show off all his money, like what he does with it, really? I mean, you're not going to just create one suit. So basically, that's explained that he has created a whole bunch of new suits. That mm-hmm. at, on a, It's no longer this is the new Mark Ironman suit. There's like 25 new suits or whatever. That at any time, for whatever the situation, he will put on. He put on this gigantic suit. He looked like a Transformer. Then he also had a suit that was like a nano-sized remote control Iron Man, microscopic. So, and then he had his regular new suit. And I got to say, I really enjoyed it a lot. I think that was touching. They did a flashback to the past and they did in the present. Uh, and they also showed, like, talked about him having a new body, obviously, because he of um, Civil War II, that he was killed, but then he evolved, and it was a whole thing. So, and I'm glad, you know, War Machine's Alive too. that was resolved in, in, in uh, Iron Man 800, which now they're renaming it number one. So, good book by Dan Slott. Got to give it to him again. And I'm looking forward to the Fantastic Four. Um, and that's our yeah, quick we need, some, we need some Fantastic Four hype because, you know, over the years, it's just been, you know, it's... The uh, sad part is, though, if Disney loses the rights, then Marvel is going to cancel Fantastic Four again and um, everything else probably. So the reason why they canceled in the first place really was because of that whole thing. They didn't want to create new characters for um, the movies. So yeah. it would be really devastating if they they didn't, um, you know, they didn't have Fantastic Four again. They would cancel, which I hope they don't do that. All right. Yeah, it's just getting trashed everywhere. I mean, just quickly on the comic thing, uh, for me, obviously, as a Walking Dead comic fan who catches up every single, you know, issue, 
uh, it's a really troubling time because obviously Walking Dead TV show is in turmoil. Let's be honest. It is it's... well, yeah. I, I wanted to talk about that with you because here's the thing: you saw Fear the Walking Dead, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm caught up with that. Yeah. I don't agree that Madison Clark should have been killed at all. They've they've uh, killed the show. They've what they've they killed it. I okay. mean, and the guy wanted to leave Nick. The guy that played yeah, Nick wanted. Yeah, that's, that's fine. That's fine. But don't. But she was not expecting that. And we got some insider info too. The the showrunner that was before this one, yeah, had said that they had a meeting. They told him what was happening. He was not happy and disappointed that they killed off. They were going to kill off Madison Clark, and this yeah, was I, former I, showrunner. It, it's obviously so. Right. So basically, what's happened here? Let's be honest. They have rebooted the show because there's no original characters apart from Alicia. Alicia wasn't really a popular Alicia woman. Strand and Daniel's going to come back too. Yeah, yeah, Strand. Yeah, he's. I guess he's from season one, episode six. So yeah, he counts yeah. as a character. But you know, really, the show has been pretty much rebooted, and that's fine. The new, by the way, nothing against the new characters. I love John. He's yeah. awesome. Yes, he's John cool. Dory. Yeah. The new characters are cool, but so are the old characters. Yes. You know, just what are you doing? You've killed off the show. Did I don't I agree with giving, they made Morgan the leader. I mean, that's what the showrunner yeah. said and nobody's happy about it. And this Morgan hype is so boring to watch. It's the worst part of the show. He just keeps doing the same storyline. He, he, the, okay, the reason why Morgan's boring this season is because we've seen this storyline in season six of The Walking Dead where he doesn't want to hit anyone. He wants to do... I know, it's good. Just They all go through this little funk and... and like King yeah. Ezekiel is like, I'm not king anymore. I'm like, shut up. Carol, I don't want to kill anybody. Shut up. I mean, they all go through a little. Yeah. And we all thing. know that by the end of this season, or maybe next season, Morgan's going to kill someone again. It's so boring seeing the same storyline again. I don't want to see the same crap. Well, uh, we also got Andrew Lincoln. And again, here's a kicker. When they announced that Carl was leaving, you know, Chandler Riggs was not happy, of course. The family wasn't happy. Andrew Lincoln was not happy. He said flat out he wasn't happy. Um, Laurie Cohen and Maggie wasn't happy either. Mostly everybody was not on board with Scott Gimple's decision. They even kind of hinted at it in Talking Dead. You could tell the way he looked, the way they looked, not effing happy. Andrew Lincoln said, you know what, there's no reason for me to be Rick anymore because I cannot act by going on without Carl and without, you know, it wouldn't make any sense and I'm not happy about it. So I'm leaving. And you know what? Yeah, they it, immediately gave the role. They gave tons of money to Norman Reedus. I don't know why they've done that because first of all, Norman Reedus has been a very popular character over the years and he was mostly good up to, I say season four, five ish. But after that, his character has been doing nothing. They've done no character. He screwed up constantly, that character. There's a yeah, reason no, why people no, are a leader. Go on, sorry. People are a leader and people are a second-hand or right-hand man. He's not a leader. He's not anything. I mean, I think the writing of him for the last three, apart from some of the episodes like the Negan episodes where he's captured, they were kind of cool. But apart from those. Listen, when they tried to do a two-parter with him, or was it one-parter or two-parter, when they tried to do a whole centric Daryl episode with the with the sister to, you know, like yeah. he, they screwed that shit up. He was terrible. Yeah, he's had no character development. That's no. the worst thing. He's had no rom nothing. I mean, maybe if they were building up his character with a romance, so he had. I mean, he's the reason Glenn's dead. He's the reason why Alexandria fell because he had to go against Rick, and that was a constant thing: breaking his word, going against Rick. Alexandria, they got pissed off. They went after Alexandria. Everybody got, you know, Daryl was the reason. I'd rather for Maggie as a leading character over Daryl. I would, um, even Negan. <laughs> well, another thing, too, is she decided she was going to leave. Then she wanted more money. She already signed on for the pilot. They decided, hey, let's pick this up because she's popular. Regardless of anything, they picked up the pilot without anybody seeing I just, it. I, oh, my God, I've just realized something so cringy. The end of last season, where they're planning, you know, to defect against Rick. Don't tell me one of them's going to kill Rick. Well, Norman Reedus got some heat about it, and he says, "I want to tell you right now, I'm not on board with this." See, that was a Scott Gimple thing. But when the new showrunner came in, they voiced their opinion like, "Bullshit, I'm not doing that." Yeah, so, just grab that crap. 
because it's crap. Maggie is going to be either dead or disappear too. She's leaving when Rick leaves. Yeah. Or I dying. Know. And the, the kicker now, right, Vaughn? We were talking about this. Yeah. They got Shane back because Rick's probably going to die. So they're going to show all the dead people, all his dead friends, ushering them into heaven. They'll probably have Carl. They'll probably have Lori. They'll probably have Dale. They'll probably have <laughs> T-Dog. They'll probably get everybody. They won't do T Dog. We always forget about T Dog. <laughs> I know, right? Why do I gotta forget about T Dog though? He was like What's wrong with T Dog? I know, and he sacrificed himself and everything. They never give a crap about T Dog. So T-Dog. messed up, man. Yeah, at least Carol should remember him. You know, she saved her life. I know, um, right? I'm, I thought something really screwed up. Imagine if they did like some bizarre. Oh my God, Shane had a twin brother. What? That people were saying that you're out of your mind. <laughs> They're not even in the same area where Shane was. Which, that's why the, the thought of a, a Fear the Walking Dead crossover is impossible because there's no way anybody from Rick's group is going to find Morgan. There's no trace, there's no communication, there's nothing. I still think Fear the Walking Dead could be better. I mean, it would be difficult without Madison. I think uh, it's done. It's, and they took the idea. What did I say? Didn't they say for many years they should do where the, the storms, there's... The weather is messed up because of the, the, the zombies, the walkers, and the natural yeah. disasters are going to occur. That's what they're going to do in the field of we're Walking Dead next half. Walking Dead, which is natural a- disasters and storms plus walkers. Yeah, they're trying to clone the Walking Dead model, which is a dying cash cow. What they should be doing is their own thing. So but the whole season is going to be a storm, though. That's yeah, the whole thing. Be, you know, the rest of the place in the world, why not go to you know Britain or? Other countries, like, uh, um, you know, I want to see what happens. I would have loved to see them in New York. That would have been great. Yeah, most, yeah, that is a good thing. They Times know, Square? Know, oh, my God. I know they don't do it for budgetary reasons because, you know, getting a city and getting people out of the city hmm. is very expensive. But there are ways. You could, there are places in the world where there are buildings. You could well, do let me ask Vaughn. Vaughn, where would you want them to take Walking Dead if, um, if they uh, decided to leave... Um, were they Virginia now? Off the air. That's why I would love to take them. Where? Off the air. Off the air. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, are you asking where the film is? Cancel that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, cancel. No, in, she said, yeah, I think they should be canceled too. Yeah. Well, they're in Texas right now, right? Fair no, enough. well, Fear the Walking Dead's in Texas. Yeah. Walking Dead's in Virginia, I think, or Atlanta. Where are they? Still in Atlanta? They're still, I'm not, not in Atlanta no, anymore. I haven't follow. I, I think they're in Virginia. I'm not sure. I think they're in Virginia. But anyway, yeah, I think um, I, I said it. Once Rick dies, I'm not watching the show. Yeah, well, that's the point. Okay, so the people who are still watching Walking Dead, the loyal fan base. And by the way, 8 million, 7 million viewers is still great. Mm-hmm. But it's nowhere near what the Titan Walking Dead was. People are still watching the people who are interested in Rick. Nobody's like, going to um, watch Like Series 3, that, that type of viewing ratings, which was good. Mm. Yeah. But you know, and it's a sh- and also I wanted to bring up the comment before I go dead quick because actually the storytelling from Scott Gimple is actually pushing through the comics. His comic quality has always been good. But the past two storylines have been quite poor. Oh, terrible! Yeah. He's yeah. gone against the comics, though. He's made it so difficult for them to use anything from the comics now. Yeah, I, they're obviously trying to, you know, take a story from the the later comics. Um, but they, you know, I, I don't think he's going to let them, and it's a shame because his comic quality has gone down as well. So I think Walking the Dead. The comics I heard are doing a lot worse. I've heard it today. The comics the people used to sell, they're not. They're starting to really the die out. Story, the current storyline is really boring. Yeah, people are not happy the with Blaine. Commonwealth, the Commonwealth. First of all, the Commonwealth doesn't make any sense. It makes no sense that you could have a community of fifty thousand. I don't believe that to be true, by the way. I think um, the leaders of the Commonwealth are just lying about their numbers. If it is true, then it makes no sense. It doesn't work as on the apocalypse. And it's just boring. Like, um, yeah. I don't understand at all. Uh, I mean, Carol's still cool in the comics. Like, oh, he's dead. Carol died, I thought. No, I mean, um, so Ca- he was cool. Carol killed herself, right? No, not Carol. Cal. Cal. Oh, Carl. Carl's still alive, yeah. Carol. Carol's death in the comics. Spoilers, guys. She walks yeah. into zombies. <laughs> and decides, kill me. <laughs> some, she, was, right. she was very similar to her character from season one of The right. Walking. Very emotional and stuff. And obviously Sophia's still around. 
Wow. <laughs> Sophia. Ha. That's a great character. Yeah. That character was, that's when they got it right. That yeah. Was the first that was the best scene, scene ever best. with the bar. Yeah, with the bar. The yeah. best. A little, a Shane's lot of, flipping uh, out, opens the door, like, nice oh. Very emotional. Yeah, Yvonne, I'm sorry. Oh, no, I'm just saying the first four, I give it the first four seasons was solid, but then it just went to crap after that. Mm-hmm, because they, they lost the stakes. Uh, the reason why the first... They should have never killed the governor off, I think. Yeah. I love the governor. Love they should have never fucking there. killed him off. They should have never did any of that shit. Mm-mm. I was like, oh. He yeah, should have lived that. Let him live, and he comes back season eight, season nine. I mean, they did show him get shot in the head, right? Yes. Yeah, but they did so show that. him be a walker, or they didn't show him be a walker? They showed him being shot in the head. But uh, they didn't show him die, right? Or they did? No, they showed him being stabbed, and then the, the season, episode nine of season four, they show his bullet hole in the head. Somebody, uh, the, the mother of the child, trying, I can't remember her name. So he's dead, yeah. That sucks. Yeah. But... Oh no, we still have um, Tara. Woo! That's such know, a great right? character. God. Uh, well, let's talk. I want to ask your opinion about this too. What do you feel about Chris Hardwick's situation? Oh, uh, that that is a really. I honestly, I don't know what to think about it because I really like Talking Dead. Obviously. See, I, I talked mean, to some people today, and I got some different reactions than I expected. People think he really did it, and I'm like, well, why? Like he, you know, I don't think he did it at all. But I think I think playing either don't or did did it camp are stupid. I think most people should, and they never do, just play the camp innocent until proven guilty. Don't judge him for anything, but also don't accuse the woman who's accusing him. Just wait for evidence to be showed if there's going to be anything like that. And if there isn't going to be anything like that, then you shouldn't be losing anything because that's how the world works. It should well, be. Chris Hardwick's wife came out flat out. And she says, you know, she's always been part of me too. And that's why it's really difficult to, to enter this conversation. But basically, and she's not doing it at obligation. She's 100% behind her man. He's a gentleman. He's a great guy. And she's like, that person that said all that stuff, the truth the truth's going to come out. That's not right. Not, not, not the way it is. So she didn't really bash her, but she said that person. What's so, the update in the story? Is she trying to do anything legally, or is she just trying to get money out of it? She's there? trying to... No, no. From what I think, personally, she's trying because she cheated on him. We saw the texts. She begged for him back. He said no. Whatever she went through in her life, misery of another boyfriend, whatever, she knew she had it great when she was with him. Because he became higher and higher and better and involved, she didn't like it. So I feel... I think the boyfriend pushed her, the new boyfriend, but I think she went. They went to sabotage him and destroy his life, because even if he's super rich, criminally, is she trying to report? No, she's not doing shit. That's the whole point. She said flat out, "Thank you for your support, everybody. Let's just leave it in the past. It's done." No, bitch, you fucking pulled that that shit. Yeah. Okay, that's why it's different to the Bill Cosby and different to the Rolf Harris thing because. When those things happen with those people, people did go through the court process and go through the court process. She illegally has recordings, which is against the law in California. Yeah. If she went any further, she'd be arrested. She'd be her life would be wrecked because she's full of shit. And she even got called out that she lied flat out because the text came out. She said that oh, because she has an ego. Oh, I dumped him, even though I cheated. I dumped him. I don't want him anymore. Bullshit. Bullshit. He told the truth. And that's what it is. She, I mean, this is a Panama, you know. In it's a woman scorned, but she, it's not that she she cheated for a whole over a year. Yeah. Well, if she was telling the truth, even if she got arrested, well, she's not. She wasn't the certain. Well, that's proven. what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. If she was telling the truth, she would report it legally because, um, worst case scenario, she'd probably get a payout, which is still better than nothing. Best she shouldn't get shit though. Oh. She shouldn't yeah. get shit. Yeah, because she, she cheated lied. and she lied. And you know what? She th- and she never mentioned his name, and yeah. her boyfriend mentioned the name. That's why this came out. And the boyfriend kept saying, "We got evidence on Chris Hardwick." She ain't saying shit. She's playing it cool. Even on Twitter, she's not mentioning his name. She's like, "Oh, thank you, everyone, for support. Here, contact this number if you are sexually abused. Contact this number. Contact. This. Let's move it behind it. I want to move on with my life. Thank you. Like because you did what you had to do. You destroyed him." If I was Chris, 
who, you know, has got a lot of money now. I wouldn't pay her off. I would just, you know, if even if the reputation is ruined, just do the right thing and just ignore it. Listen, his fa- his family was rich. His wife is rich. He's rich. He, he's not going to be homeless. He's not going to be destroyed money. He just, everything he loves to do, he can't do. He can't take pictures of anybody. He can't interview anybody. He did it mostly because he loved doing it. Now he's just going to be rich and just not be able to do shit. And he's not, that's, that's hell. That's hell. Because he can't do what he loves to do. He can't do yeah, anything. Yeah. So uh, she got what she wanted. It's a shame that in the 21st century, if a man or a woman makes an accusation, typically women, in fact, it's quite sexist if a man does it, then they seem to get in trouble. Uh, you automatically destroy someone's life. You should always be believed, but it shouldn't be, you know, guilty before innocent. It should be due process. It's and the funny shame. thing is, Everybody's like, oh, me too, me too. But the guy, the boyfriend, did shit. Dude, they should be up in arms about that. Like, she didn't even do it. She, she was never going to mention his name. Ever. I don't know. I think, honestly, you're going to see what's going to happen. And I think AMC, <laughs> for doing that, they should, they should have to pay up. AMC and NBC, yep. I mean. For damages. And keep his job. Another network, another network should see his talents and be like, hey, screw AMC. And come anybody on. goes with her is yeah. going to get ripped apart, probably. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Go with the public will watch who they want to. If um, another network picks him up and he can do other shows, you know, talk about what he enjoys. He must enjoy other shows apart from The Walking Dead. He it's lost like- Doctor Who. He lost the DC Comics yeah. panel. He lost a lot of shit, bro. Yeah. yeah. Bro, he. he Oh, my God. But the, yeah, you know, a, the yeah. loser here is, it's not him, even though he is a big loser. It's the people who are dropping him. They're losing talent. And people... Well, I hope he can sue the shit out of them, actually. I really do. I don't think it's possible to sue that many people. You know Why I mean? not? It's def- def- defamation. First of all, he didn't do anything. It was, he, it was, a, it was a woman... Sa- and she didn't even mention his name. Yeah. I mean, that's like saying, hey, you know what, um, James... I have to fire you from your job because you're a vegan. I'm sorry. You don't <laughs> like plants. I'm sorry. They give up carbon dioxide. We're not happy with that. We're afraid from that movie, Terror of the Borbells. In, this, in this whatever. company, we, we eat mm. I'm sorry. Mm. But this is what it's coming to. As it is now, you cannot get hired if you're a Republican or a Democrat. They flat out won't. Eat, and it doesn't matter if it's wrong or not. They're like, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. We can't hire you. I find both sides politically equally as cringe. Um, you've got the obviously left-wing people who are very SJW and very annoying, but actually right-wing people are also SJW. If you disagree with someone who's right-wing or a Trump supporter or anything like that, they'll just call you a leftist. No, I just disagree with you. We can have a conversation, dude. Sick of all labels. Sick it's, of it. It's a shame. There's no option for people who are politically censored with common sense these days. Mm-hmm. Just all extreme options. And now we got wonderful news that I'm sure people are so ecstatic about. We know that Roseanne Barr had released everything where they can make a series, a spinoff without her making a dime. So that way her people could continue on without her. I guess they're going to kill her off. Yeah. And, and. But they still have, they'll still have, it'll be reversed because they still have Dan. Yeah. Mm Yeah. It's called the Connors. <laughs> I, I don't even know That's what it's going to be called. I, I, it's going to fail. This is, I don't want to see that. I don't think anyone does. No. No. Uh, before we um, end this, uh, I just wanted to mention uh, the good news in the past month, though, has been our streaming service have been picking up the slack from these ancient networks with Amazon, Netflix, picking up great shows like The Expanse and Lucifer. That's really, really good. Lost in Space, you got to check out. That's great. Really yeah, good. I did need to check that out. I uh, love it. I'm obsessed with The Expanse right now. And anyone who doesn't watch The Expanse who's a sci-fi fan, you're not a sci-fi fan. <laughs> watch The Expanse. No, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it. We good. talked about wanting to see it, too. Yeah, the, first, the problem with The Expanse is the first three episodes are boring. I'm not going to make it up, guys. They are quite slow. It's a bit like, you know, how Game of Thrones is quite slow at first, where it builds up the world yeah. and the characters. But The Expanse, season three, this is how good it is, is 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. 100%. 
That means nobody dislikes it who's reviewed wow. it season that's three. Great. That is very, very... That's higher than Game of Thrones season four and six, which are very highly rated seasons. So it needs to be watched by everyone. It's very, very good. It's very realistic. Without spoiling it, to describe some scenes to you, when fire happens, you know, in a spaceship, the fire particles go in the air. That's realistic. That's what would happen. Uh, if you get hurt in space, you're dead because there's no gravity, so therefore your wounds can't heal. It's, it's little details like that what makes the show really good. Right. And I really well, when we, when we watch it, I want to put you on the cast list so we can go over it. Sure. Are you, um, so you're in the US, so I think it will be uh, the first, yeah, so you'll have the first, all the seasons on Amazon right now, so you can just Well, I don't them. have Amazon, though. I have Netflix. Yeah, I have, I have, I have, I've just cancelled my Amazon subscription, actually, because there's nothing on it in the UK. But, All right, I'm going to have to look into that, because I don't know if I want to get another, because I, I, at one point in time, we had two, but it gets expensive. I don't, you know. It's just more expensive. Uh, we'll see, we'll see. I'm, I mean, I may do the Amazon thing. When, when we wa- when I watch it, and whoever my people are, are, all of us, our people watch it, then we'll, we'll let you know, we'll, we'll do stuff together. But you could come on, too. I mean, we could do other stuff, too. Yeah, I mean, it's a short thing for everyone watching The Expanse. Imagine uh, 200 years in the future, Earth is the UN, 30 billion population. You've got Mars, which is the Martian Congressional Republic. That's like um, kind of like your Russia of the show, <laughs> in right. a way. And then you've got Belters on the asteroid belt, which are like maybe your independent nations, you know, who are not ruled by other people. And they're just, and basically by season three, they're all going to war with each other. It's, oh, it's so good. It's one of the best right. shows and of course, we're going to be doing Doctor Who stuff. We're hoping yeah, it's cast because. Is it weird that I'm actually excited? Maybe not even if it's a good show, but just to talk about that show when it comes back. It's very exciting that people have never seen it yet, but already rated five stars on Amazon. I got a five star. Outstanding. That's, that's right. Like five star. First, star like, oh, this is so fantastic, man. I, I can't. The performance was like, wow, wow, man. Especially since they're not even done filming and there's not even a trailer. There was a review. I remember there was a review for season eight DVD. Are you serious? There's, no that there's nothing. We did a cast on it. I don't know. You weren't in the cast, right, Vaughn? We, no, me and no, Scott no. did a cast on it. There's like five reviews on there. Of, of, of series 11 and Doctor Who. By the way, guys, that is why when you see a product on Amazon worth you know, $10, $20, you think, oh, that's really good. And you see five-star reviews. Don't trust them. Don't trust them. Because 90% of reviews are fake. Yeah, they're paid yeah. for by companies or whatever. They're not real. I only trust the the products which are like three star or four star because they're usually honest. Five star and one star reviews are typically dishonest. Right. One tip for you, especially those reviews about a book that with an exercise bike. Ah, no. Ah, I remember that. Ah, Mr. Yeah, Krayling. yeah. Mr. Krayling, that was his, not mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, guys. <laughs> Thank you, James. Good to see you. No problem. Come back soon. Uh, Thank you, Vaughn. All right, guys. Take care. Bye for now. Have a good one.